The most financially illiterate group of adult South Africans are black women. Many financial interventions fail to account for the impact of culture and social needs of black South Africans. Through Wealth at Work, we aim to create an environment conducive to increasing the potency of the financial strategies employed by women leading to holistic long-term wealth creation. My name is Jolly Mokorosi and thank you for joining us on Wealth at Work, a show that focuses on wealth creation and education in South Africa. My guest today is none other than my husband, Sam Mokorosi. He spent most of his daylight hours as a mergers and acquisition dealmaker in the financial services industry. He has worked on transactions worth more than 40 billion rands over his 20 year career. He is passionate about family and developing others. We've had many conversations over the years and I thought it would just be appropriate to have one with him today. Welcome. Thank you, love. Uh, good to be here and um, looking forward to our conversation. So I thought, uh, to flip things around a little bit, maybe I can I can interview you and really get into your mind and your heart about the vision um, for Wealth at Work and just um, get get to understand a little bit about where this came from and 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 what's your heart behind it and, and how you want to... Uh, uh, change the world through uh, through conversations. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about um, about uh, some of what birthed this great initiative? Yeah, you know, I think both since both of us are black, we understand the the perils of growing up black in um, in in the regime that we came out of, and also the pain of seeing how black people live. You know, one of the the most painful moments for me was when our son Tapang. We drove through Gladstone and he said to me, Mommy, why is it always that the brown people are poor? <laughs> that was incredibly painful for me. But it's not just that. I mean, both of us are institutional work in, in businesses where we work in, in a sector where we, we represent institutional business. And sometimes we go to these big launches and we see that no black people are represented in their individual capacities there but there are white people that are there in the individual capacities. And the entry point for these products, the entry points to be at that table is actually, you need to represent 100 million, 200 million to even be worthy of an invite. And there are people sitting there in their personal capacities and they're not yeah. black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so really um, economic transformation um, financial transformation is some of uh, what you're clearly passionate about, what we're clearly passionate about. Um, and um, and I know that education for you is a big part of that transformation journey. Um, mm -hmm. What what kind of lessons are we hoping that people are going to bring out and pull out and, and understand in terms of um, uh, the, the, the fi financial world and the exciting journey of, of, of building wealth that's multi-generational. I think the thing that excites me the most is the idea of passing on those strategies that really move the dial. So you find that a lot of financial products or the focus of even advertising uh, for black people is around loans and around funeral schemes. Now the thing about funeral schemes is they are important and insurance products are important. They do form part of an important kind of financial planning strategy. But we really do need to have the plans and the strategies beyond that. So I think my thing is financial strategy, if I'm to sum it up. And over the years, I've seen people do incredible things. I mean, including your mom <laughs> and your aunt, actually. I often joke about how um, it was your pitch Part of your pitch that made you stand out is this whole idea you had of putting of um starting a trust named after her simply because she had been so instrumental in the education of so many of your family members i really thought none of the other guys knocking on my door talking about things like that so this guy is really he's really different so for me uh, having lived in three countries um growing up in three countries seeing the same patterns being repeated over and over. And I think South Africa being worse off than the other countries because really 
It was just, it was a, a it was poverty that was written into law. It was systematic. Um, and the biggest, the brunt of this is felt by women and children. Because at the end of the day, when anything happens, um, it's the women and children who just seem to be carrying this burden. And that is clear in some of the statistics that we see um, around financial literacy. Great, so, um, so, so just really saying, how do we start to turn the narrative around? How do we start to change the trajectory? That's it. How yeah. do we um, have conversations? And you know, I think one of the things that 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 um, you see in other communities that don't have some of the financial challenges that, um, that we as black people have is that conversations around money, around finances, budgeting, investments, they're just a lot more um, common and, and a lot more freer. Um, and it's also, I think, you know, being being a man, seeing the differences as well. In fact, um, just yesterday, uh, we were socializing uh, with some friends, and and you know, it is it is a thing that we do as 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 gents. You know, apart from talking sports and politics, we also talk money quite a bit. You know, um, you know, what are you investing in? You know, what is this Bitcoin thing? Should I be swapping brands for dollars? And um, and you know, I do find that 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 um, uh, that those kind of conversations don't happen in every context. Um, and and I think that you know those kind of conversations need to be happening around the dinner table at home, um, around the braai with friends, um, and around the boardroom as well. And one of the things that 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 we've also been talking about. Um, uh, between us, love is is you know that the, the place that it starts really is around um, the small daily decisions, um, yes. around maintaining a budget, um, you know, getting out of debt, um, making sure that there's that there's the, 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 I think it's uh, Dave Ramsey who speaks about the four walls, you know, so make sure you've got your food sorted. Make sure you've got your transport sorted. Make sure um, you've got your electricity and water sorted. Uh, make sure you've got your accommodation sorted, you know? Um, and so many of us are going after the Gucci belts and, and you know, the overseas holiday before we even sort out those four uh, walls. And then, and then we come back from holiday and uh, sometimes needing to borrow money from friends, you know? And it's, and it's those kind of daily disciplines over years that build up to to wealth accumulation and and mm. then, then um, give a legacy to the next generation but i think the thing that was also missing for me from a lot of the conversations let alone the fact that a lot of women don't want to discuss this thing so even in those circles um it's it's very difficult to even have that conversation is around the whole idea of planning beyond this week and next week you know i have a child I hope this child will go to school, but what kind of school do I want this child to go to? Does my income allow me to, to, to send my child to that school? If my income doesn't allow me to send my child to that school, what can I do or what have other parents done to get that child in there? What is my plan for this child? You know, am I dreaming about my children's children? Am I dreaming about what I'm gonna leave for them? Um, and you know, what, what constitutes an inheritance and what constitutes something worthy of being called an inheritance in the first instance. For me, it's sad uh, working with um, death benefits and retirement funds, the number of times people have called it inheritance. And it's, it's only black people who do that. But the reason being that that is basically the sum total of what people are leaving their kids as inheritance. And simultaneously, I also come across a lot of men not wanting to tell their women, what's going on financially out of fear that she's going to kill them. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, what happens is that if he does pass away under those circumstances, his family really struggle to figure out what's going on. And that is under a very, very strenuous, um, very strenuous environment. So even when we, when we see the decisions made by black people, most of those decisions are actually made in a stressful environment. And, it, and we all know that 
if you're stressed out about something, you don't necessarily make the best decisions. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think there's so much to to personal wealth and personal financial planning. Um, mm. I, I always say to, to my friends, if you don't have a financial planner, get one. <laughs> Um, it's not an easy uh, relationship to have with a financial planner um, because because they get you to do the things that, that you don't really want to do. You know, you want to uh, go on a holiday and buy fancy toys, um, but they ask you things like, you know, um, Lord forbid a truck runs you over tomorrow, what's going to happen to your family? Um, mm. You know, in, 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 in the upside scenario that you do live until 90, are you going to have enough money to actually look after yourself um, uh, until that age? Or are you going to be standing in the queues uh, for government handouts? You know, so so these are kind of tough conversations that we should all be having um, with our significant others. These are tough conversations we should be having with professionals um, and, 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 and really I'm um, thinking about you know tomorrow as opposed to as opposed to just today. Now, one of the things that 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 obviously is a huge hindrance um, within many many uh, South Africans' lives and and, and and across Africa is obviously that you know if there's more month than money in your budget, um, it's very difficult to be actually thinking about. The future thinking about saving thinking mm. about retirement um, and so one of the things that i i am also very passionate about is 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 income generation right so so there's two there's two sides to the coin the one is are you being responsible with the money you are getting but the other side of the coin is are you maximizing the money you can get um and i yes. always talk about yes. um, multiple streams of income so we can't just um, be holding on to the salary, the one salary, um, because anything can happen with that salary, right? I mean, we've seen through COVID, um, lots of layoffs, uh, reductions in in people's salaries. So, so you know, um, can you pick up an extra side hustle? Um, there's a guy that comes to our gate uh, who's who's often short on cash and he's always saying you know can i at least wash your car or something um but that that kind of hustle mentality of saying can i can are there other things that i can do to generate an income so love thank you for being my guest today <laughs> sure very excited about uh, all the shows and all the best thank you for watching wealth at work we look forward to sharing more stories and profiling other dynamic entrepreneurs and business people please like and share leave a comment telling us what topics you would like to see. Next from me, Jolly Mokorosi. Thank you and goodbye.